<laughs> oh man, y'all, you can't make this up. What's going on, y'all? Machiavelli Mills TV. So, got an interesting topic for you all. Um, basically, I've seen people talk about it on social media, and they ask the question, they pose the question, should you live with someone before you marry that person? Should you have experience, experience living in-house with another person who is potentially your spouse before y'all actually jump the broom or tie the knot or whatever you want to call a marriage, right? Um, I say 100% absolutely. I believe that you should live with a person before you marry them because to me, you don't really truly know a person until you're living with them for real, right? When people have two separate living arrangements, like it's easy to like, when a person gets mad, they can just go home to their house. You know, they can blow off steam. You don't have to see them at their worst moments. You don't have to see how, you don't have to see how angry they can get at times. They can just leave and then, you know, go on about their merry way, right? Um, when a person doesn't live with you, you don't get to see their habits, their um, um, things that they like to do, how cleanly, how, how, how clean they are, how filthy, how filthy they are for real. You don't get to see um, just their true characteristics every day because you're not with them. For majority of the day at times. Like some people, some people are, are an exception to the rule where the significant other really stay with them majority of the time and it's really different. But some people, I mean, they live separately, and it's just that's the arrangement and how it is until they get married. And for me personally, man, like I feel like if you're gonna marry somebody, like I feel like you really get to see, like, see, when you when you're in a house with a person. You get to see how they respond when they get upset. You get to see if they throw if they throw a fit, if they throw tantrums, if they scream, holler, and yell, if they are, if they go, if they are off the hinge, if they're like basically unhinged people when they get angry. Um, you get to see how they talk to you when they're when they're upset, so on and so forth. That I think that's in, in ways, I think when you live separate from a person, you really those things are kind of shielded. They are they are um hidden. In ways, like I said, a person can just go home when they mad. When you live with somebody, like yeah, you might can go and get catch some air, get some air a little bit, but you ultimately gotta return back home. You gotta sit with that person and talk through arguments and talk through different um, problems that you may be having. And you really can see if that person is capable of talking through an argument. If that person is capable of um, being mature enough to be accountable. Uh, for things that they did wrong in a situation, if they can really ha have a mature conversation and then still get through the night, apologize to your spouse or your significant other and carry on with the day. Some people can't do that. Some people will be mad all, all day long, all day long. They will get, they will become spiteful. They will become vengeful, vengeful, so on and so forth. And sometimes you don't get to see that unless you're living in a house with a person. Some people, when you don't when you don't live in house with them, you don't know again their habits. You don't know if they really are disgusting people, right? If you, <laughs> some people are really clean people, and they can't handle filth. And if you don't live with them, see when your spouse coming to visit, you can hurry up, clean up. You can make it look like you clean. You can dress it up real, real nice. You stand with somebody, your true habits, your true nature emerges. So if you're a filthy person. Your filth is going to come out at some point after, you know, you know, after the marriage, you can do, you can probably hide it for a few weeks here and there, but eventually that person going to see, oh man, this person don't like to flush the toilet when they leave the bathroom. This person really do not like taking out trash. This person really leaves trash all throughout the house. This person leaves wrappers, food, laying all around, laying all out. This person leaves clothes all in the middle of the floor every time they wash up and take a shower. This person really does not clean up behind themselves when they make a mess. And so you, sometimes you can only can see that 
when you're in, in the house with a person because being in the house with a person, uh, it it allows a person to, it, it, it creates a level of comfortability to where you'll see a person's true state. They become a little vulnerable and you see how they and how they um maneuver a hundred percent. You know, if you have if you're a person who has children, right, and you with a significant other and you have children, and let's say your partner does not have children, or they may have children or whatever, right? Maybe you know they may have a child, they may not. You don't know if that person really loves your kid, like you love your like you love your kid, or if they're just tolerating your child. You can only find that out if you live in a house because it ain't nowhere for them to run to. See, when again, they you if they tolerate your child, they can just go. They can make them make an, make up an excuse to leave the house and just, or to leave or go somewhere else or whatever. When you live in a house, you get to see. No, like we they got to be in there with you to deal with your child or your children or y'all got to deal with each other's children. And you see if that person is just tolerating your children or if they really have love for them for real. And I'm not saying they're not going to get upset with them or get mad at them, but you can really see. Some people really don't like your children like that. They like you and don't like your kids. And you only going to see that when you're in a house and you see how they interact with them, what they say to them, things they don't say to them, um, you know, how they, it, it, how they, again, how they interact, if they, if they, if they encourage them, if they uh, are standoffish towards them, so on and so forth, you got to see that. And you'll see that when you live in a house with a person. See, back in the day, they'll call, you know, living with a person before you're married, they'll call that shacking up. They'll call that, you know, oh, oh y'all sha <clears throat> shacking. Y'all not following the vows of, of, of God or the covenant of God. You're not following that. You're not following what God says. And so they'll say you're shacking. In my opinion, you test driving. You're seeing, man, is this for me or not? Is this person for me? Is this person my person? Or is this is this is this something that I just need to just let go into the wind? And I think when you live in a house, you get to see all of that, man. You get to see if your person, if you're really dating a childish person, you get to see if you're dating a person who um does not know how to successfully communicate. Um, you get to see if the person is a, a, a lot of different things. If the person is um selfish in a way um you get to see if the person it, like like again when again this is the thing when you live in a house with a person and see when when you're dating a person even before marriage a relationship is about being selfless when you when you're living with somebody and your significant other goes to the store they go get all the stuff that they like and then they come home empty-handed for you. You're like, dang, this person ain't even thought about me for real, right? See, when they living by themselves, they get to come home, bring all the stuff, all the stuff they want to back home. It's all good, fine and dandy because you ain't in the house with them to bring stuff back to unless you just having it happen to be there kicking it or whatever. Then, of course, he know he got to do that or she know they got to do that at, that at that time, right? But when you living with somebody every single day, does that person still think about you when they going... And they're making these trips to the stores. They're running errands. Do they still do they do they get a little something for you when they go on on their own little missions to go get something? You see all the different nuances and all that type of stuff when you're living with somebody. Right? You get to see if this person is the affectionate, intimate person that you are on the same level. Or if not. Because again, when you don't live with somebody. And you may have not seen each other in a week or two. The person may be real affectionate, very um, lovey-dovey, very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Very romantic, so on and so forth. You get to see if that person is, you know, the person may be romantic because they haven't seen you in a while and they have, it's been such a gap between the last time they've done it. So they're like, they're like okay, cool. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do that. But living with somebody will get to see, you'll see if that person if that person does it when they don't have to do it, right? You know, when you live with somebody, you see them every day. Some people feel like I don't got to do all of that because I'm seeing you every day. Is that person still romantic? Is that person still a, 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 a an intimate person, an affectionate person? Does that person really, really like you for real? You get to see that when you live in a house.
And it's nowhere for y'all to really go to outside of maybe going to your mama house, going to your cousin house for a little minute. But you got to come right back home at the end of the day. You get to see that when you're living together with a person. And that's why I advocate for people too. And again, I'm not telling nobody what to do. If you want to live separate, that's perfectly fine. Different strokes for different folks. And I understand that that things work differently for different people. Me personally, I got to stay under the roof with you before I can kind of, before I, before we get married, so I can know if I can do this, if this is something that I can go for. It, it, can we cohabitate with each other? Do we work well with each other? Are we, do we work well as a unit? Um, am I the, am I the only person doing all the housework around the house? And, you know, you feel like you don't got to do nothing and, you know, you'll see those things. Um, is, is the per is, are you dating a person who's fair, who, if they see you always going to the store and getting all the groceries and all this and all that, will they in turn say, you know what? I'll do it this time. I'll do it. I'll do it. I got it. I got it, baby. It's cool. Are you dating a person who does that? Are you dating a person who notices like, oh man, we gotta, um, um, we, okay. We gotta switch things up a little bit. You know, are you dating a person who, again, is not just folk is is a selfless person for real. You see that when you living under the same roof. And that's just my opinion. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, Machiavelli Mills TV. I'm out. Peace.